What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the PlayStation 3 emulator RPCS3 and I will be using Windows 11. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is head on over to 7zip.org and we're going to use this to extract the emulator. If you don't already have 7zip installed, the link is in the description below. The latest software update file is 4.90 as the recording of this video and I will leave the link to this page in the description below. Once you're here, you want to scroll down until you see how to reinstall the PS3 console system software and go ahead and click right here on the plus button and then you will see download PS3 update. Go ahead and click it. Now you may get this alert saying that the update file can't be downloaded. What you want to do is right click on it and go to keep and then hit keep anyway. And your download should start. And last, we're going to head over to rpcs3.net, and this is where we're going to download the emulator. At the top of the page, you'll see download. Now, this emulator is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. I am on Windows, so I'm going to download for Windows. I now have the emulator file and the update file on my desktop. Let's go ahead and extract the emulator. Once you have 7-Zip installed on your PC, all you need to do is right click on it. If you're on Windows 10, you'll see 7-Zip here. If you're on Windows 11 like I am, you're going to go to show more options, then 7-Zip and extract to RPCS3. And that's going to create a new folder with your emulator and all the additional files. Let's go ahead and open that folder. And this file here will be your emulator. Let's open it. Welcome to RPCS3. Now, if you would like to create a desktop shortcut and a start menu shortcut, go ahead and check both of these boxes. Check I have read the quick start guide. And if you don't want to see this message anymore, click do not show again. Continue. Now, the first thing we're going to do is install our firmware. So let's go up to file, install firmware. Go ahead and locate wherever you saved your firmware. In my case, I saved it on my desktop. Here it is here. PS3 update. Select it. Successfully installed PS3 firmware. Okay. Now we're going to set up our controller. So let's go back up to the top and let's select pads. Under handlers, you have the option to select a keyboard, a DualShock 3, DualShock 4, DualSense, X input, MM joystick, and SDL. I am using an Xbox Series controller, so I'm going to select X input. And the nice thing about this emulator is that you do not need to map your buttons out. The emulator will map your controller out for you. Now, if you would like to change some of the buttons around, then you simply select the button you would like to change. So let's say I didn't want the Y button on my Xbox controller to be the triangle. You would just select that button and hit the new button on your controller that you want to be that button. And if you have multiple controllers attached to your PC, just repeat the same thing for player two, player three, and player four. And you may also want to come over to profiles and hit add profile, give it a name. I'm just going to call it P1. Okay. And that'll give each player its own controller profile. Once you are done, go ahead and hit save. Now let's go up to config. And in the CPU settings, we're going to leave everything at the default settings. The only thing we're going to change is under additional settings. We're going to check the box to enable SPU loop detection. Now this will improve performance and reduce CPU usage, but as stated in the description below, it may cause audio stuttering, but it's rare that that will happen. Now let's go over to GPU. We're going to leave the renderer on Vulkan. For your graphics device, if your PC has a graphics card, make sure that graphics card is selected. An isotropic filter, we're going to go ahead and boost this up to 16. This will make your games look a lot better. Now for the default resolution, we are not going to change this. We are going to leave it at 720. This is not how you increase the resolution. Instead, you want to come down here to resolution scale. So if we move this blue bar up, you will see that 150% is 1080p, 200% is 1440p, and 300% is 4K. 
I'm going to leave it at 200% for 1440p because my monitor is 1440p. Now if you're running your games at 1440p and 4K and you're noticing stutter and lag, then you need to dial it back to 1080p or 720. Now we are done, let's go to the bottom and hit apply and then save. Now let's go ahead and add our games to the emulator. Let's go up to file, add games. Locate wherever your PS3 games are on your PC. In my case, mine are on an external hard drive. Select that folder and then hit select folder. And then all of your games will load into the emulator. And if you would like to change the way your games are displayed, then you can come up to the top and select grid. And you can enlarge these icons by moving this bar to the right. And also, if your games won't load into the emulator, it's because you need to extract your ROMs. You can use 7-Zip to extract them, making them playable within RPCS3. Now we're going to check to see if any of our games have available patches. Let's go up to Manage, Game Patches. New patches are available. Do you want to update? Yes. Now it's going to give you a list of all of the available PS3 games that have patches available. We only want to see the games that we own. So up here, you're going to see only show own games. Check this. And now it's only showing me the games in my emulator that have patches. And these patches can be anything from frame rate change, resolution, and aspect ratio. For an example, if we click on Demon Souls, we have quite a few patches we can enable. We do God of War 3, same thing, quite a few. And if you see any patches you want to try out for a particular game, you just go ahead and check that patch and that patch will become enabled. Once you are done, go ahead and click apply and save. Now you can also create custom configurations for particular games. And you can do this by right clicking on a game. So let's do Gran Turismo 6, right click, then go to create custom configuration. And this brings you back to that same config menu you seen earlier for your CPU and GPU. But these settings are only for Gran Turismo 6. So if you find that some games run better with different settings, then you can save those settings so you don't have to keep going back into your config options and changing things around. And the last thing I want to show you is how to install any update files you may have for particular games. Now I don't have any, but say you do have some update files, the way you can install them is to go up to file and install packages and then locate your update files on your PC and hit open. Now let's go ahead and load up a game. Now when you first load up a game, you will see PPU modules loading and when you're in game, you will notice shaders loading. That will cause your game to lag a bit and this is normal. The second time you play that game, it will run smooth because all of your shaders have been loaded. Now if you would like to go full screen, all you want to do is press alt and enter. Thank you guys for watching. I hope the video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like. And if you would like to see any of my exclusive videos on emulation, then make sure to check out my Patreon. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.